Vicona has massively upgraded their HD750 all-terrain e-bike with huge tires, the biggest of any bike I reviewed, dual batteries for combined total of 30 amp hours, and better front fork air suspension. This monster is powerful and big enough to go places you typically wouldn't take a bike. Now I've reviewed a few other bikes in this price range of all-terrain bikes from $2,000 to $4,000, so I do have something to compare the 750 to, which costs $2,899. That is a hefty price tag, but for what this bike can do, I think it's worth it. So let me show you what it can do starting off with a speed test. Bikana calls this the 750 because it does come with a Bafang 750 watt motor that does peak at 1000 watts and that's powered by an LG 48 volt 15 amp hour battery. Now there are two batteries so you actually have 30 amp hours which is almost double the amp hours of any other bike in this price range. The batteries can be removed pretty easy with the keys. They actually give you four keys, two for each battery. And once out you can charge them on the go which takes six to eight hours and it also has a battery level readout. And then when you put them back in, you don't need the key, they just snap back into place. I found a flat stretch of trail to see how that power transitions into speed. Now you can limit the top speed in the settings. I think it goes up to like 75 kilometers per hour. I'm gonna show you how fast the bike can go on each of the five pedal assist levels, starting off with level one. For pedal assist one, I got eight miles per hour. Pedal assist two, 11. Pedal assist three, 15. Pedal assist four, 17 and pedal assist 5, 24 miles per hour. Since that test was done in a dried up creek bed with soft ground and sand, I wanted to see if I could go faster. So I found a flat stretch of road and hit 26 miles per hour, which makes the HD the third fastest in this price range and is well over the rating of 20 miles per hour. The 750 has a 6061 aluminum alloy frame and it does weigh 81 pounds and has a weight capacity of up to 300 pounds. On the same stretch of road that I just did the speed test, I'm gonna do an acceleration test between a pedal assist level five and straight throttle. Now the fastest bike in this category hit 32 miles per hour in 19 seconds. Now I know the 750 can't reach that, but I'm still curious to see how fast, how quick, and how long it takes to top this bike out. The power is delayed for both pedal assist and throttle. With pedal assist, it takes about a half to three-fourths revolution on the easiest gear before the power kicks in. And with the throttle, there's about a half a second delay, which is pretty good and what I've seen before with other brands. Now, as you can see, it's not the smoothest trail, so I was impressed that the bike did so well, taking less than 19 seconds with throttle to reach 24 miles per hour. That makes the HD the second fastest in this price range. Well, the 750 has a 60 to 80 mile range. It's time to test that out. I do have a full charge on the bike. I've just started my tracking app. Let's see how far I can go. For this test, I spent most of the time off-road. There was about a half a mile of road from my house to the desert, then another five mile paved section from the desert back to my house. And most of the time I used the throttle. This is just a mean and tough and gnarly looking bike. I like that gray soft color with the yellow logo. They've got created with the logo. They placed it in the front of the bike where you can also add a basket and then also on the shocks. If you want to have the biggest bike on the trail, this is the one to get. It does take a little getting used to on how to manage this thing. But once you get it upright and you're cruising, it is very stable. Those tires, there's just so much surface area on those tires that you know, right off the bat, I could ride this without any hands. As far as geometry, there isn't a size rating for the bike. I'm 5'11 and almost had to stand on my toes while straddling the bike. It's one of the tallest bikes I've tried. The seat is adjustable like you have with every other bike out there. I don't have it pushed all the way forward, which I usually do. And so with that position, there is a lot of space between the handlebars and the seats. I think after this ride, I'm gonna be adjusting that seat and try to move it a little bit closer to the handlebars. It's just a little bit out of my reach, so my lower back is starting to fill it as I put the miles on. The faster I go, the more stiff the steering becomes. You know, it takes more effort to actually turn sharper, which I do like because, you know, it gives you more stability. But then when I'm going slow over this rough trail, the steering seems to kind of loosen up a little bit, and I can easily move around these bigger rocks and potholes. Now 
Now, most of these 750 watt motors are pretty loud, especially when you know you start climbing a hill. Every now and again, I find that there's a few brands that put some dampening on those motors, and this is one of them. It is very quiet. It's always nice to have a quiet and powerful bike. That's a good combination. Now this is the upgraded model to their old HD750, which I reviewed about a year ago. You now have Promax aluminum alloy low rise handlebars with a 740 millimeter span. You kind of need a wide length with such a beastie and huge bike. Next you have lock-on velo grips, which are very comfortable. They have an SRAM X5 9 speed trigger shifter. That is one of the higher end shifters I've seen. The brake levers are aluminum alloy as well, and they do cut the motor off when either lever is pressed. The SR saddle is definitely an upgrade from the old saddle. I don't have any padded gear on and haven't felt sore or uncomfortable throughout this test. The front fork air suspension is made from Biconet and it has 120 millimeters of travel and can be locked out. I did a couple tests going fast and slow and when going fast, it does rattle me pretty good. But then I slowed it down and it just crawls over those rocks nice and easy. Now this does have a hardtail, so it is bumpy on the back end. They do offer full suspension bikes, but you will be paying much more for them. The most appealing feature about the bike, in my opinion, that makes it stand out is the huge 26 by 4.5 inch Kenda Juggernaut tires. You see these three to four inch fat tires. Rarely do you ever see four and a half inches. And that half an inch makes a big difference as far as just looks go. This trail has a bunch of sand and ruts on it and the tires haven't slipped yet. As far as the pedal assist sensitivity, it's on the higher end. When topping the bike out, if I stop pedaling, it cuts off within about a half a second, which is what I've seen with many other bikes. And then when I begin to pedal on the highest gear, it kicks in at about three-fourths of a revolution. Now the throttle is delayed just a little bit. It's about a half a second. It's very minimal. And this is the type of bike where you can still get a little bit of a workout. You can still feel some resistance, even when topping it out on the highest gear. I didn't have to increase my cadence by very much to feel some resistance. For the off-road part of this test, the bike held up well as far as the battery. In the first bar and a half, I had almost 12 miles, and that's after climbing a bunch of hills as I was testing to see what the bike could do. More on that later. Once I hit the road, I kicked the bike onto level 5 and throttled it back home. When I got back, the bike still had most of the last bar left, so I'm thinking I could have gotten another 3-5 to five miles from the 22.89 miles with 1,157 feet of elevation gain that my app recorded and I was still hitting 26 miles per hour, which is the same speed I got with a full battery. Now that is short of the range rating, but this is the type of bike where you're typically not gonna be hauling down a paved trail on full throttle. I think if I kept it where it belongs, out in the dirt, I could have gotten much further. And if one and a half bars gets 12 miles, then five bars should get you in the 40s, which still doesn't hit the low range of the rating, but it's still pretty good for the size of the bike. Well, the nice thing about this bike is its ability to just take off road you don't need a trail Bikana has designed this <laughs> Bikana has designed this to explore the unknown you know go off the trail uh, it's uh they classify this as a hunting bike and it has a tow capacity of 300 pounds you can take this where nobody has gone before you got uh you've got the power you have the torque when you need it up to 160 peak as i mentioned before and this is pretty soft terrain too i'm i can see my tires sinking in it's like a mix between gravel and sand one of the reasons why they made it so big and so high and obviously with these monster tires is to tackle you know brush and sagebrush and weeds this is just powering through it. This is the type of bike where you can just look to where you want to go and V-line it straight there. 
Oh yes, this is awesome. The more I got used to the 750, the more I liked it. Oh man, that is a fun, fun ride. I just came down from the top section of this trail and oh man, it's uh, this handles very good, going pretty fast for such a big and bulky bike. This is one of the smoother rides I've ever had on a fat tire bike. And it's still light enough to where I can pop up the front tire and get a little bit of air, which is always a good time. Now well, this is the no power test. I'm gonna set the assist down to zero. That cuts all power. I'm gonna work through the gears and show you how easy or hard it is to ride this without any power. I'm on the first gear, going five miles an hour. This might even have a slight downhill component to it. And I just switched to the fifth gear and now starting to feel some pretty good resistance. Okay, here's a hill. And it is a doozy. Ugh. Holy crap. Yeah, I can't make it. <laughs> that was definitely too steep. That's got to be a 40, 50% grade. I don't know what I was thinking. I made it up about halfway. It's doable to ride this without any power. You definitely want to stay away from, you know, large hills if you do it. I'm still out of breath. There's no hill rating for the HD, but the motor does produce 80 newton meters of torque. 160 peak so we got plenty of power to work with i just measured the hill in front of me it was 40 percent at its steepest part i'm in the lowest gear and failing the resistance but it's making it up <laughs> nice man that has got some power this hill is the same steepness as the other one but it's about three times as long let's see how it does I'm really gonna be impressed if I can make it up this. Oh, I gotta stand up. Oh, holy crap. It's going. I'm sliding a little bit. Woo. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a workout, but it gave me enough to make it to the top. Holy cow. That's the steepest hill I've ever gone up on any bike. The 750 comes with Tektro HD 725 piston hydraulic brakes with 203 millimeter rotors. Test out these brakes. Woo. It's sliding, but man, got some great stopping power. Next, I'll run through the LCD screen and control pad. On the left side of the handlebars is the power button. Hold that for a couple seconds. I do like the look of the screen, very nice and large. I mean, it's pretty big, kind of compared to my hand. If you hit the power button, you can kind of toggle through like your max speed, average speed, miles per hour. Of course, you have the up and down arrows to change the pedal assist level, zero to five. If you hold down the top button, that turns on the light. And the headlight is very bright. I did take this out at night and had no problem seeing the trail. Hold down the bottom arrow for a couple seconds and that engages the walk assist mode. And the bike does move about three miles per hour. To access the menu, hold down the top and bottom arrow for a couple seconds. The top is where you can limit how fast the bike goes. You can change the wheel size, the units. A lot of these you don't wanna mess with, but pretty easy to navigate and to scroll through. The HD 750 isn't recommended to ride in wet conditions. It has a one year warranty with a lifetime warranty on the frame and free shipping in the lower 48. Bikana is based in California where they design, develop, test, manufacture, sell, and service their bikes. And they're offering $100 off with the code I've got in the description. Overall, if you're around my weight of 185 pounds, here's what you can expect. A top speed of 26 miles per hour on a flat paved road. A quick acceleration, the second fastest in class. A pretty good range in mixed terrain of about 25 miles. Keep it off road on a lower pedal assist level and you could easily get another 10 to 20. Hill climbing is excellent. This has some tremendous torque and power and could climb over a 40% grade. And the hydraulic brakes are smooth and strong and cut the power to the bike when either lever is pressed. Well, if you couldn't tell, I like the bike and have no problem recommending this. It performed well in all of my tests. If you wanna pick it up, I've got the link in the description. Before you go, hit that like button and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board, and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and take care.